So I just finished making my first song and is it any good? And uh, no, it's not. But that was not the point is to learn and try to make a habit of music creation. So in this video, we're going to go piece by piece on how I made that song. And at the end, we'll listen together and then we'll talk about the big lessons I learned and how I can use those to improve the next song. So my name is Chris. And if you're not familiar, I am currently doing a challenge to make 97 songs. So I live streamed the entire process of making the song. And if you're interested in seeing the whole entire boring process trial and error, you you can check out the videos here in the playlist but let's keep this video short since this is the first song i wanted to keep it simple not to overthink it so basically it's just kind of be intro verse and chorus and basically just have kind of four instruments which ended up being drums bass guitar and like a synth lead now i need a musical idea the musical idea i got was from a guitar lesson i was taking and it was this simple progression of d minor a c and g next up is going into the doll so let's see what i did there here we are in the doll and before we start here, you can see me record in the full measure strums of the guitar. And it's just basically the same chord progression I explained earlier. What I did after that was I double tracked it, which is, means record it twice. And I panned them left and right so we can have a little bit more stereo field and we can listen to that real quick here. After that, I started working on the drums. I relied on contact and the studio drummer in there. I went to the grooves here, pulled one of the grooves from here. I believe it was under indie rock. I pulled that in and I replaced the kick and snare pattern and made it my own, but I kept the hi-hat pattern. So let's listen to that. This pattern just repeats itself until the end of the phrase. So let's move on to day two. I was mainly working on this melodic part for the guitar. I went through a lot of revisions here, trying to find a good piece, and I comped it quite a bit because my take was not very good. This part is technically the intro, and it's just a slower like half note. Here it speeds up a little bit. So let's listen to this just real quick. Then with the drums. had to build up into a transition for the chorus. So that's what this part and this part of the drums are. To be honest, I am not, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a good drum programmer. So one of the things I did to help me learn drum programming is, so I took one of the songs I was learning on guitar and I'm using, I'm using pickup music to learn guitar. So they have a lot of awesome courses. I took the song that I was learning and I programmed the entire drum section. What this allowed me to do was kind of learn where the pattern has variations and kind of what the differences between the verse and chorus are in kind of drums for the song and how to make some fills, which I found very useful and I was able to take back to this song. So let's listen to that real quick. That's the transition going into the chorus and that marks the end of day two. So now we can jump into day three. I started with the drums and of course I relied on studio drummer. I pulled in a groove and worked with that. So here's what that sounds like. I made some modifications to it. I added the tambourine and changed cymbals to use a the crash. Then the more difficult part was working with the guitars. With the guitars, I probably spent over an hour trying to work through different ideas. The first few ideas were definitely more complicated and it just wasn't working. So I just made it a little bit simpler. So it's the same chord progression, but different rhythm. Let's listen to that with the drums and the guitar. Okay, so it still sounds a little bit weak, so I added bass after that. And I'm not much of a bass player. And luckily, maybe four months ago, I found a bass guitar. And here, let me let me just go ahead and show you. Here, I found this bass guitar out in the recycling area of my apartment complex. Someone just threw it away in the gig bag and everything. And 
this pretty decent little bass. With the advent of finding that bass, I also started learning a little bit of bass from Pickup Music, which they have a bass pathway, and it just showed some common patterns so far that I learned. So I used that to make this bass pattern, and I'll play it solo, and then I'll add the rest of the instruments. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much as far as I got with day three. I pretty much got the core of the chorus done. Let's move on to day four. The start of day four is when I spent a lot of time trying to add a little bit more layers and elements to the verse. As you can see, I have some muted clips here, and I did have some more, but none of them worked out. I deactivated them. This is just one of the dozen of ideas that I was trying. So you can take a listen and see what you think. Did I make the right choice? I felt like it didn't add anything to the song. So I, just for this part here, I spent maybe 50 minutes and I didn't even use this. So let's de deactivate those again. The other part of day four was trying to find a lead part for the chorus. And I just tried, I tried multiple things. I tried just finding something on the piano or the keyboard here tried finding something on the guitar and just like noodling around for like 20, 30 minutes and nothing was really feeling good. Nothing was sounding like melodic. So I decided to try the strategy of just singing, but not technically singing, just making noises. And I just looped over 10 takes of me just making these sounds. So embarrassing actually. That sounded horrible. And I was able to go into Melodyne, took some of these notes, moved them around a little bit. And I took that and I put that into Hookpad, which is a music theory and composition tool. I can drop in the chords and make a progression while experimenting with how a melodic line fits over that. And basically, it's just a quick way for me to experiment. You saw what I did there and I was able to export this MIDI here. And I just loaded one context instrument and then layered it with another one. I was able to take this scat and turn it into this melody here with the help of Melodyne and Hookpad. So let's go ahead and take a listen to the full song. So that's the first song I made for this challenge. I did struggle a lot making the riff and coming up with the melodic part. One of the things I learned was sticking with something instead of like getting stuck on one part and giving up and doing something else and getting distracted. I was able to push through that and actually ended up working for the case of the guitar part and scatting the melodic line at the end, even though it's extremely embarrassing doing that. I've always kind of noodled around on the guitar or come up with a three note line that I can't extend. But when I was scatting out some lines, it kind of naturally felt easier to make a longer melody, even though it's out of tune, wrong notes and stuff like that. So what do I want to improve for the next song? I would definitely want to be able to add some more layers instead of just relying on like core elements only like drums, guitar and bass. I want to be able to add a little bit more synths and some layers, melodic parts, the interweave harmonies and stuff like that. And that ties into making it a little bit more complex with the rhythms and melodies. That will require me to learn a little bit more and improve with my guitar playing and music knowledge. I'm already working on song number two, and you can see that in my live streams on this channel. All right, thanks for watching. And let me know what you thought of the song. And if you want to stay around, please like and subscribe to this video. It'll help a lot.